Well, we're on the bank at Makings Fishery today on Lake Four, which is a tricky lake, but um, the fish in here are really nice and big and they do respond to the pellet waggler. So hopefully we'll catch some real nice fish. I've got the new Horizon Pro pellet waggler rod there and uh, simple tactics. I'm confident we're gonna catch a few fish for the cameras. It's one of my favorite ways of fishing as well. So uh, we're gonna have a good time, I think. Well, I think the pellet waggler has to be one of the most enjoyable ways of fishing, but you can't always fish the pellet waggler every day. It's really, really um, governed by the conditions. And today I've got the wind off my back um, and it's absolutely ideal for feeding and casting and everything. But if the wind was in my face, it'd make pellet waggler fishing a hell of a lot harder. And if it was coming really badly left or right, pellet waggler fishing can be really, really hard there. Purely because when you cast, your, your waggler will be coming off course really really fast and know you get a big bow in the line it'll be pulling it off course and no self-respecting carp will look at that but today it's off my shoulder or it's off my back and it's absolutely ideal um, waggler conditions plus it's it's summertime it's uh the fish are up the fish are active and this is the time of year for pellet waggler fishing if you're on a peg and it's on a day where there's no wind or wind off your back. That's what I'm always looking for with pellet waggler fishing. There's no point trying to make it work if the conditions are bad. That's when you switch to bomb fishing or feeder fishing or pole fishing closer in. Well, I've got both the 11 foot and the 12 foot waggler rod set up. My choice for a venue like this is probably the 11 foot, um, but everyone's got their own sort of fishing style and playing style. I find a lot of people, if you've come from more of a traditional background using 13 foot float rods on, on rivers and that, then they tend to go for the 12 foot rod. But I find 11 foot for most of the commercial venues I fish is ample. Um, but I do use a 12, especially if the venue's a bit deeper. Um, and sometimes the fish are a little bit bigger, sometimes a, a 12 foot gives you a little bit more winching power, I suppose. But this 11 foot, as you can see, the action on that is absolutely beautiful. Nice through parabolic action, as they, as they say. And um, you just want it to absorb every single lunge of these fish. I'm only using a size 16 hook. So um, you don't want the hook to be pulling out as you play them under your net. But you can see there's loads of power in there. I'm not giving it loads, but I'm confident of getting double figure fish out on both of these rods. Pencil slim blanks, but, but no end of power in there. <laughs> this one's suddenly woken up. So yeah, I'm gonna go with the 11 foot mostly today, but I'm gonna have a couple of chucks with a 12 foot. This is a deep lake. So um, if I wanna chuck four or five foot, then sometimes, a, um, if, if I'm fishing four or five foot deep, should I say, then sometimes a 12 foot rod is a little bit more a little bit more convenient for casting with a slightly deeper rod but um, with a slightly deeper depth but in the main I'm going to be fishing anything up to three foot deep today and I find 11 foot perfect for this sort of venue and pellet wagglers up to about six six or eight gram come on he, he's a bit shy for the camera this one might be a bit of a ghosty you never know not seen a ghosty yet. No, it's just a big fat mirror. Come on, here he is. Oh, just in the nose, that one. You can see the pellet from here. It'll do though. Getting on for eight pounds, seven pounds, something like that. Yeah, right in the nose. No wonder he didn't want to come up. Let's, let's say hello for the camera. There you are. Let's try and catch another. I think one of the biggest tips I can give across when pellet waggler fishing is to not use too thick a, a main line on your reel. So um, I'm using six pound Horizon X Mono there, but that is actually only 018 diameter, which is closer to a lot of four and five pound um, reel lines from a lot of other manufacturers. So 
Ordinarily, when I would say I'd use a four or five pound line, I'm actually using six pound in Horizon because it is 018, which is really, really slim. So, um, and that's going to make a huge difference to your casting. You'll be able to cast further, you'll be able to cast smaller floats, and being able to present your rig so much better on, on float gear because you've only got three, four seconds of good presentation on a windy day. So, so having thinner main line will help your float work in a swim just that little bit longer and lead to definitely lead to more bites but you you just everything will be better you'll be able to use smaller floats and less effort with the casting and your rig will be in the water working longer as well so always go for a nice thin diameter reel line 018 is what i generally use i'd go up to 020 if i was on a real crunching venue like Boddington Reservoir or something where they're great big angry things and a big open reservoir but for general commercial fisheries like this one here at Makings Fishery 018 is dead right for me and I'm matching that up my go-to hook length is um, 018 power micron and I usually use a 12 inch uh, or 30 centimetre hook length with pellet waggler um, it's just a, a length that works really well for me and the way I set, it, set up my waggler I'll go into that next but the way I, I set up my waggler means that a 12 inch hook length is, is dead right I can fish anything from 12 inch or above I very rarely fish shorter than that and 12 inch just seems the right amount of stretch and robustness and everything for 95% um, of my pellet waggler fishing so 018 reel line 018 hook length and a 16 hook and that's my starting um, gambit wherever I go on pellet waggler gear Well, I've tried all sorts of pellet wagglers over the years, some loaded, some unloaded, and different connection methods. Sometimes we've shot around it and everything, but I keep coming back to the tried and trusted loaded pellet waggler. It's by far the easiest way of fishing a pellet waggler, and I find it the most convenient. And as long as you feather the line correctly, they shouldn't dive too deeply either. So, um, and for me, it's more about choosing the correct size of float that creates as the smallest amount of plop and everything so it doesn't dive too deeply. But what I have is a number of different floats. The best float today has easily been the 8mm 4 gram matrix pellet waggler, but I've got bigger sizes and I've got some little short dumpier varieties as well if the fish come a lot shallower. And I've even got some loaded peacock designs there as well. So, and I will, I think that's really important to be able to swap between floats. Um, the wind's just dropped now, so I can drop down in, in a little bit in the waggler size if the wind gets up or if I suddenly see some fish a bit further out, then I won't hesitate to, to pop a heavier waggler on. So being able to use one rod and quickly swap and change pellet wagglers is a massive advantage to me. I don't want to set up three or four rods. I just want one rod that I can set up straight away, clip up the waggler I want, and uh, I'm in business. But I'm using the pellet waggler attachment kits. Now these are really, really useful. Um, you get um, one float rubber above and three below. The three below just helps to avoid any slippage on the cast. Um, sometimes when your hands get a little bit greasy in that, um, these can move about. So having three also gives you a bit more security and really help prevent slippage. You can really punch a waggler sometimes, so, so it's, it, you'll find it's really useful. Some people just put two, but I, I do prefer to have three below. You only need one above because you're not putting any pressure on the one above on the cast. And also it's got a quick change snap link um, swivel so I can add and subtract a waggler really, really quickly, as so. But it's really important to point out as well that unlike a lot of snap link swivels, this one's got a rounded top and that centralises the pellet waggler right in the middle. Quite a lot of the old style of American snap link swivels have, um, they, they have a point to one side and that can help that can make your pellet waggler veer off to one side or, or the other slightly on the cast. So having this rounded top really helps to centralize your pellet waggler and it will give you that extra five percent uh, more accurate casting ability so that's it um, simple pellet waggler attachment kit one float stop above three below and a quick train swivel and i leave that on the rod even when i pack it away just slide it all down to the loop pack it away like that and then you're good to go for your next session Well, 
I've just had a bit of a bruiser of a fish there. It came in like a roach, then it saw me, and then it realised it was a great big fat carp. Almost got a belly like mine. Uh, <laughs> but it's gone a bit funny, um, or it had gone a bit funny. Um, I normally start about two or three foot deep. Yeah, with a pellet wagon, I normally start about two or three foot deep. Um, but I will work the depths around. That's why that pellet um, connector link is so useful. You can move the depths up and down. But um, things went quiet. I, I dropped down to three, three and a half foot. And I've probably had three great big bream for £10 that looked immaculate. Um, they were a bit of a surprise to be catching shallow on the pellet waggler. Um, but then it went a bit quiet. So I've dropped back to two foot again and I've had two in two drops. But I think that's really important to just keep moving, moving those stops up and down and, um, and you can alter your depth. I think the optimum bait for pellet waggler fishing has to be eight mil pellets. Um, we're here at Makings Fishery today, so um, we're using the fishery eight mil um, feed pellets, they're green swim stims. Um, and they're the ideal size for feeding on a nice biggish open water lake like this and make a nice little plop. And they're a bit more selective as well, so we'll catch hopefully more carp than anything on them. Um, you could use six mils, especially if the lake's a little bit smaller, and you could go up to 10 or 11 mils on a really big lake. But generally, if in doubt, stick with eight mils and match the hatch with an eight mil on the hook as well. And as far as feeding goes, um, there's two main ways. One is to cast then feed, and the other one is to feed then cast. And what I generally like to do, the wind's just dropped now. It's actually gone up quite a bit recently, but the wind's just dropped now, which is so it's quite nice to just what I like to do is just prime the peg with two, sometimes three, sometimes four pouches of pellets first. And by pouches, I just mean um, anything from sort of two to six pellets. But feed two or three times and you're priming the peg. Don't be in any rush to get out there because what, by feeding before you cast, you're hopefully revving the fish up for when you actually do. So I'm going to feed three times, pinch of pellets, and then I've got the pellet waggler ready. and I want to cast right in the middle of where those pellets are plopped. And that's usually, when they're active and when they're feeding well, that's usually the best way to, to, um, to go about it, I find. Now, the wind's definitely yelling up. So, oh, what I do, I'll wait, I'll wait five to 10 seconds, no more. Um, you usually catch these fish instantly within five, 10 seconds of the float hitting the water. So I'm not gonna leave it out there hanging for too long. So the other option, when the wind gets up especially, is to cast, but really punch it past your feed. And then, and then I like to feed short of the float, sometimes one, sometimes twice, and then draw it into the, into the area of feed. Now I find that's better, especially when it's a bit windy. And also if the fish are being ultra cute and coming straight to that splash, and you can wind into the pellets quicker than you can cast into the pellets. Um, so, um, so, but mix it up, that's the main thing. Don't use one feeding pattern all day. Sometimes just feed two or three pellets at a time. Sometimes feed three or four pouches, then go in, sometimes feed one pouch. Sometimes cast in, then feed. Just really, really mix it up. And uh, there will be a pattern on any given day. Today, definitely, the best way has been to to feed two or three times very lightly and then cast right into that pile of feed and the bite's been almost instant. Um, but because I've got that rope a bit further, it's 10 meters past where I'm actually feeding, um, by casting every now and again much further past, I, I've got a chance of catching some fish that are hanging off the back of the feed. Today they've been right in the feed and that's definitely been the, the winning formula today.
hook baits. By far the best today has been matching the hatch with the same 8 mil feed pellet as what I've been firing out with the catapult. And I just use them a finger now, just pop them on a, a medium bait band and they're good to go. Um, the other thing I will try though, and it has, it's not been so effective today, but you go to some venues and it can really work well, is a wafter, or these are wowsers, which is a bright wafter um, in orange and white, whatever shade you fancy, but a nice contrast bait to what you're feeding on some venues and on some days can be really, really effective. It's definitely not been the case today. They've wanted um, a green pellet. Um, I've got one other hook bait as well, and th these are green pellets as well, but they're an old batch that I've had lying around my carriage for ages, and half of them float. Um, and then you can see they're a lot more porous than the, uh, the current batch of pellets. And so they're gonna fall a lot, um, well, probably they've probably fall half as fast as the, um, the feed pellet you can get now. So um, I've had a few fish on those, those as well, but to be honest, matching the hatch with an eight mil feed pellet has definitely been um, the best hook bait option today. And I've probably had 90% of my fish on that. Well, there we are, the fruits of a cracking day on the pellet waggler and uh, plenty of bites, every single one on the float, anything from two foot to four foot deep. We've had a few bream as well, we put those straight back, but um, hopefully the tips and tricks I've, uh, I've passed on will help, help you catch a few more fish like this. And uh, I'm sure you'll soon work out that this is one of the best and most enjoyable ways of catching fish at this time of year. Well, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and uh, there's plenty more content like this on the Club Matrix website and YouTube channels.